Hi, my name is Claire Wong. I'm Joint Artistic Director of Checkpoint Theatre and I am also the director of The Heart Comes to Mind. Hi, my name is Eun Shuan. I'm an actor and I'll be playing Lin in The Heart Comes to Mind. Hi, my name is Shah Tahir. I'm composer, sound designer and musician for the show. Hi, my name is Ryan Sim. I'm a cellist and I'm the cellist and co-composer of The Heart Comes to Mind. So Sha, you remember, right? Mm. I invited you to Checkpoint and then I said, I want you to work with me on this play. Mm. Uh, and it's uh, hopefully a way that is different from how you and I normally work when uh, you design a, a, a theatre production. I don't really compose music like a length, like a full length music. But usually our production is it's really like a transition and sound effects and you know, music music like that. So but in this case, you wanted really a scored piece, like, you know, uh, uh, the music being like a, like a character in the play, not just the background. Uh, we, we talked about it, and then I think we kind of uh, trying to find that balance, because this is not your usual music, especially for play. You know, if you're writing a, a song for an album, it's quite, clear you know you have a structure you have a, you know intro verse and but this is now you're trying to uh, make music be part of the uh, vocal uh, the words basically the words so you're trying not to uh, go beyond be too big and also not too small and so that fine balance is actually quite tricky so after we talked to you mm. and I um, I scheduled a series of uh, design workshops involving the cast and um, the playwright as well as um, the two of you uh, in order to um, work out how we would make this, how we would mm -hmm. create this because it's we are both trying to innovate our approach um, and then we came together and we came uh, with, with ideas. We, 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 we had uh, a lot of discussion and also set for the read and trying to understand this whole play, what it, it is about. And then um, we decided that each, uh, the father and the daughter, should have a, a sound, a sound or an instrument or some sort that, that represent uh, these two characters. So I think that's why we, she asked me what, what other instrument you think you want to bring along. So I said the cello. Yeah, and then because yeah, I mean the cello for me is a very a very wide range emotional instrument. It can be very subtle and very uh, very gentle, and also it can suddenly jump out, you know, out front and become very aggressive. So I think, and I also I, I love the cello. You know, after listening to uh, all the fancy uh, yo yo ma, is it? and the, what sheku. Sheku, uh, this, this British cellist is like, wow, it's like a magical instrument in this cello. I remember you you describing the cello as something that's very, um, almost very, for you, like, yeah. like the human voice. Yeah, like a voice. And of yes, course, yeah. it, it really fit well in yeah. terms of um, what I was reaching yeah. for, because I, I'm interested in working with the cast, uh, uh, with their vocal instrument uh, in a very uh, different way, possibly, so that it becomes a performance of you know their vocal instrument with the the, the non-vocal mm -hmm. instruments yeah. creating yeah. and unpacking the layers within the script yeah. and within these characters yeah. so the, there is i guess the idea is that it's a very intimate yeah. play yeah. Uh, we are really uh, looking at these characters yeah. quite close up yeah. in their home and then inside their heads yeah. So I think the idea is how do we have a certain bass yeah. instrument yeah. and range of sounds, uh, but within that, of course, make it as expressive yeah. Yeah, we're trying, as possible. Yeah, yeah, trying to limit, trying to limit and explore as much as we can with that instrument, like the cello, how how the cello can can uh, play in a different range of the instrument to create emotion and, and things like that. I think for me, like the sound brings up a, brings out a different dimension of thought and feeling. Um, I think, like for example, like if I'm logically thinking about something else, like the sound brings out 
something in the body or in like the back of my mind or like and like in maybe like a part of like my hand that is like tingling and the sound kind of like almost represents that and um, that helps to uh, help that helps me to approach the text differently, respond to it differently. And I think what Claire uh, keeps talking about is, okay, imagine the sound to be a part of you. So that took me a while to understand at first because I'm like, okay, but I'm listening to it and I'm responding to it. So it's a part of me, what? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, isn't it already? Like, because my brain and like all the, the, the thought is like going this way, but actually it's not because it's also the sense of like your body creating that sound. And or the or the mind creating that sound and the sound like in between a word like this, la 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 la, and you know as in like you created that sound in that path, but there's also the sense of the sound um, being part of it, being over it, being under it, and just being completely separate from where you are. It's just, I think it's about um, accessing your emotional and psychological um, choices in a different way, right? Because mm. I suppose as an actor, uh, one develops certain tools to yeah. access your your instrument, yeah. um, and and I'm I'm been trying through this process of um, opening up other access points. We always used to we're used to putting our hands in certain pockets, but there are a lot of other pockets that you've not used, and um, it's very exciting for me to to uh, to see how you've sort of uh, you know trusted the process. It's so visceral and so obvious when you're suddenly um, finding a new meaning in the text and finding a new side to Lynn's character. Yeah. And I think like I come in with an idea of what Lynn is and then hearing a piece that Uncle Shah or Ryan bring in and it can be so totally different from what I thought the monologue was going to be but then it like it brings out a different shade or colour to what the words are. The hinges creaking on the bathroom door. The same air. A half drunk cup of tea. Tapping and clacking on the keyboard. The body slumped across the sofa. The other day, from the window of our lab, I saw workers on top of the building across from ours. They were mixing cement, laying ground guides, applying, patching. I watched for quite a while. Heroes in hard hats. There was something comforting. How they committed to the repetition. Churning and pouring, levelling and curing, setting, solidifying, finishing, Hardening. That is all it has been lately. Just grant application and grant application, progress reports and progress reports, bench work followed by more bench work, requisition forms and emails and preliminary poster presentations and lab meetings on Friday evenings and four more hours extracting and amplifying DNA, running gels, meeting assigned mentees, another rejected grant application, another Friday evening meeting, another month, another year, fixed, finished, hardened. So I broke. The cycle stopped. The spinning centrifuges stopped. Myself. The hinges creaking on the bathroom door. The same air. A half drunk cup of tea. Tapping and clacking on the keyboard. A body slumped across the sofa. The other day, from the window of our lab, I saw workers on top of the building across from ours. They were mixing cement, laying ground guides. Applying, patching. I watched for quite a while. Heroes in hard hats. There was something comforting. 
how they committed to the repetition, churning and pouring, leveling and curing, setting, solidifying, finishing, hardening. That is all it has been lately. Grant application and grant application, progress report and progress report, bench work and more bench work, requisition forms and emails and preliminary poster presentations. And lab meetings on Friday evenings and four more hours extracting and amplifying DNA, running gels, meeting assigned mentees, another rejected grants application, another Friday evening, meeting, another month, another year, fixed, finished, hardened. So I broke the cycle stopped, the spinning centrifuges stopped, myself. I think for me, it has been a very freeing experience. Um, I feel like uh, I feel like I can respond to very visceral things like the music and like how my body feels and um, it's it's and like to just kind of focus on those instead of just like thinking about it and going with it. I mean, the whole like your body is your instrument kind of thing it has taken on a new meaning for me in this uh, process. Uh, for for example, like in the earlier piece, right? Um, the direction was to focus on my hands. Like, what does it feel for the for for me to be sending the words out through my hands? And then the piece was sort of like quite quick and quite light in a way. And so, like somehow, like that synced. So that was my connecting point for those two things. And from there, it's like, okay, where where do we go? How, how actors, um, we give you a costume, right? And you, you, your body feels different when you're wearing a big heavy overcoat versus a very light t-shirt. Mm. And it's sort of going with that and allowing your actor's instrument to be triggered or to be inspired through these sort of stimuli. Yes. And it, it opens up um, psychological choices, memories, yeah. uh, meaning that you may not have thought of yeah. when you then use that to um, unpack the words. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's a very similar kind of approach, except uh, you, I'm, I'm asking you to use your voice, which, yeah. which, which is something I've always been interested in for a long time. The possibilities of the human voice and the vo as a vocal instrument. Mm. Why does that interest you? Because our voice is... is the thing that is so connected um, to both our physical and and um, non-physical selves mm -hmm. is you know in my in my training it's like start with the breath yes. and it's so human if you don't breathe you don't live you know and yeah. and the breath is then comes out on the voice and breath also is very connected to thought and to and emotion and we learn to mask what we feel mm -hmm. through the voice. You can always hear when somebody's voice is open and somebody's voice is um, constricted. constricted. So it really is an, an instrument that, that one can choose to, to be much more aware of um, mm. in how we are. And we use the voice to connect, to communicate, to, co co to access other people and to express who we are, what we are. Yeah. 
And I guess like for us, like in everyday life, you kind of get used to using a certain voice and you kind of settle into the area. And um, even as actors, like even as an actor, like you can fall within like a range of things. Habits. Like, of, of habits, yeah. yeah. For, for, for me, it's uh, literally trying to find out that balance, I think. Uh, trying to understand the, the emotional uh, of the text, the meaning of the text, and trying to find a music that is uh, complementing, but also not just being a background, something that you can actually notice really here. You know, that there are a lot of music that is just just uh, just a background. You know, a lot of stuff like maybe scoring the theatre for for music for theatre or movies is just in the back. You're not supposed to notice it, right? It's like that's the point. You're not supposed to notice it. But I think this this time I think we're trying to bring it to the foreground. Mm. We're trying to really uh, let the listener uh, hear the text and also hear the musical text. Both trying to say the same thing sometimes, or sometimes fight and, and contradict. I'm asking you to give your own, come in with your own interpretation mm. of the yeah, text yeah. Uh, sonically yes. uh, and, and then we we devising on the floor, you know, how these sonic elements come together or um, become bigger than what the individual yeah, components yeah. can mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting also because I feel like in a way, in a way we are acting together and in a way we are also sort of scoring, composing, composing together. Maybe the better together, word is composing. Right? Mm. Yeah, so I guess it's slightly, uh, I mean, it's interesting in how much we are involved in each other's process. Mm. Because I do think that the, I mean, the nature of the work is collaborative already, but I think the, the, the extent to which you collaborate is, like, it varies. And I feel like this one is quite, um, like, it's quite meshed together, right? Like, for every time you come in, with a different score for a certain monologue, it makes me see it differently. And then when I do it differently, I feel like maybe that also affects like what you feel like you want to do with the music. So there's a there's a lot of back and forth that happens in that process before we even reach like a final piece. Yeah. So I think that is quite um, special. Yeah. It's a completely new process for me. I mean, um, I'm used to going to. Uh, I mean. Um, performances where the notes are all written already, the music is all arranged. But in this um, in this production, I get to be part of the creative process. And so we have to go through the text and then come up with something that, like what Uncle Shah said, it's, it either complements or has to sometimes conflict. Yeah. And then in the process at added expression, I think, too. We're always so excited yeah. when Ryan comes in with his, <laughs> in his cello, you know, it's so beautiful and the sound just lifts everything up and opens up, you know, almost, I think we breathe differently when, when Ryan and his cello is in the room, right? <laughs> Writing time is made up of other kinds of time. Time for switching the laptop on. Time for thinking, reading time, research time. I think it's, it's really uh, trying to go into the mind. I think that's really, in a way, difficult lah, in a sense. You're trying to find that balance. For me, it's about the balance, you know. Whether it's uh, uh, the, the, the tempo, uh, the choices of instruments, uh, the content of the, the music, is it too much this, too much that. So I think the balance is, is important so that because we, we have this voice in our head and I think we are trying to put sound music to this voice. The music as another tool, we can help, we can help give depth and, and, and dimension. I say dimension is the word. Yeah. yeah, dimension is a really good word yeah. because I think that that's what um, is so interesting about this play. Uh -huh it's not necessarily like plot driven and then this happened and then what happened next, right? It, it really is dwelling with these characters and, and you get to know these people uh, and it really also makes, gives you time to reflect, to respond and to listen to yourself. We, we talked about um, in the workshops how this 
piece is also about the fabric of time mm. because they're both at different points in their lives you know he's retired he's coming to the autumn of his life and Lin is kind of mid midlife you know she's looking back what have I done with my life what what shall I do what you know where am I going what does it all mean yeah. and it's a question that everybody understands and also wrestles with I, I hope that we are we are opening up spaces for the audience to to meet these people to get to know them to to experience their thoughts and reflections about life about their relationship with each other what it means to be parent and child um, what it means who are you in relation to yourself and very often you will throw your pants on her pillow and the smell of pee that's gross and untrue that's what mum told you me you can check my no. pants do not smell of pee i am not going to verify that when you talk about like the, the it's an it's an exploration of grief as yes. Well, right? yes 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 the very present absent mother yeah yeah and it's like um I mean, when you lose someone, like life still goes on, but now there's a huge gaping hole, and like, how do you really deal with that, and um, in the mundane everyday life? And I think that this play explores that really beautifully, um, because I mean, you're you're not necessarily gonna have like the big. Uh, cry or you're not gonna have like the big breakdown or the all of that but the grief doesn't it's not any less real or any less painful or any less heavy mm. right and I think that this kind of goes into um, giving the space for the mundane to hold that grief yeah Am I disconcerted? Should I be disconcerted that this disconcertingly real sunset does not disconcert me? She always left the lights on. Seventeen and sweaty, sneaking in after a marathon dance dance revolution session at Sini. Asleep on the couch, heaving. Snoring. Skin draped over bones. The poetry and the lyricism in the text is a big inspiration for me in, um, in involving my maestros here. You know. So the monologues are written with such incredible poetry and imagery. Um, uh, and then we have the dialogues, which are so functional, you know. Ethan already bring in the laundry. Uh, like communication is just is is just so locked down in in a certain form, and and it does make you make me question like why do we do that? You know, why are we not letting these rich inner inner thoughts? Um, sh why don't we share them more? Um, and I and I I guess the the part of the design of the piece is is to 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 look at this you know and and to elevate and to allow us to find the depth and range in the poetry. Um, I think this play challenges my idea of what poetry is, but I feel like this adds so much poetry to like mundane things. You know what I mean? And it's like and it's so beautiful, and it just makes you go like actually we're all a little bit poetic. You know what I mean? But we don't really have the space maybe in everyday lives to, to kind of let that come out. But like the way that you're approaching it and the way that we're doing this, it grounds it in such reality that it's like, actually our everyday lives is quite poetic. Thank you. That's what I was going to say, you know. <laughs> it was very, very important to me that Peter and Lynn are three-dimensional. They are real. They are so authentic and recognisable. Um, and um, and we, we do the we do the legwork. So the process has been about okay, where do they live? What's the routine? Who cooks? Who doesn't cook? And and it's grounded in reality, but within the ordinary mundaneness of life, um, there is the poetry. Uh, and and I at the same time I I am reaching for a very beautiful. Um, beautiful and painfully beautiful uh, emotional expression of of these moments in life that perhaps we don't we don't recognize or we don't value enough you know